Hello, everyone. My name is Dave Lander. I want to thank everybody for being here tonight, for taking time out of your busy schedule. I am flattered that you would take time out of your busy schedule to be here. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk about uh, can you have your cake and eat it, too? And I think you probably already know the answer to that question. And this is my hybrid approach to trading trends, trading for both short-term and longer-term gains. Now, before we get into all that, we have to look at the obligatory disclaimer screen. You could download that off my website if you want, but uh, short version, which was given to me by Greg Morris, is uh, much, um, much better. All predictions are about the future, and a lot of stuff could happen between now and then. And by stuff, I think you probably know what I mean if you've been trading for more than a day or two. I'm not going to waste your time too much talking about myself. I think uh, most of you here know who I am, and if not, you can get a bio off my website. Just a couple of highlights. I've been at this for a long time. I stopped counting around 20 years because it's making me feel old. And I have written three books on trading. And you can check out everything else on my website. Now, you're probably more interested in the methodology than about me. So first of all, this is first and foremost, it's not my way or the highway. If you can take a piece of what I do and make what you do better, provided, of course, you're already successful, then I'm flattered and I feel like I have done my job. And I've had the luxury of being on a lot of institutional projects and working with many of my peers in the industry and people who are a lot more well-educated than me and doing a lot more complex things in the market. As you will see in here in a second, I do keep things simple. And one thing I've learned through these projects and through these business dealings and consulting and so forth in projects is that even though I think my stuff is simple and everybody understands it and, and it's, it's everybody knows that, kind of like Pinocchio being a bad motivational speaker, um, a lot of people don't really look at things in, in such a simple way and don't look at simple things such as widening, widening out the stop, easy for me to say, to to hang in there for a longer term gain. Some of the things I'm going to show you in just a second. So I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Uh, just a couple things in here I want to touch upon because I leave this slide in for all presentations and I know some of you have seen it. Uh, first of all, no secret indicators. Uh, there's nothing proprietary, okay? Um, if if somebody if I'm in a presentation and somebody starts talking about their proprietary indicators, I walk out, okay? Because I don't want to learn about something that only they know about. And if they die or if they no longer are willing to give me the indicator, then I'm kind of up the proverbial vile tributary. So it's very important to fully understand what you are doing. Now, here's the thing. Uh, not a get-rich-quick scheme. We've had a pretty good run as of late. I'm going to show you that in just uh, a few seconds. But there are ups and downs, okay? And the secret is you, you win by surviving the bad times relatively unscathed and by doing great in good times. And we're going to touch upon that in just one second. Uh, only thing I want to – well, actually I actually want to point out a couple more things in here. There's a repeatability to it. If you're following a day trader, by the time they're getting out – you're just getting in, and you could end up chasing your own tail. And some there are some methodologies that people claim to be successful with, and maybe they are, but you need a, a, an account in Bermuda or something, and it's a little bit of a gray area to try to get those trades off with an offshore account. Everything I do is very repeatable, and I never realized how important this was until I started talking about this in webcast, and I've gotten a lot of phone calls and emails on this. So if I recommend the stock, you should be able to get into that stock. It should be liquid enough. Sometimes the stock might be in a service for three or four days. We've got a setup today. It's been on service for three or four days. So you had three or four days to at least look at it. So it's not like you. I'm showing you a setup after the fact. If you're following the methodology on your own, you should be able to repeat it with a little experience. And, and um, sometimes I think I forget that it does take a little experience, and you do have to look at charts for a while and gain that experience. But it is definitely repeatable and definitely teachable. I do prefer daily charts, but it will work at all time frames, even intraday. The patterns are fractal, but I prefer not to trade intraday. Uh, I think we're only wired to make so many decisions, and I think if you're – in it out all day long, eventually you will drive yourself crazy. 
Uh, there are only a few people on this earth, I think, could uh, could make that many decisions and, and not have it wear them out. Uh, with every decision comes emotion, and that's something that we won't have time to get into tonight. But trust me, uh, look at professions where there's a lot of decisions on the fly, and those people burn out pretty quick. It is hard work. It's a lot of fun. Somebody uh, beat me up on Amazon because it's too much work. Well, if you want to do well at anything, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to work for it. And the goal is to minimize losses. Money management is very crucial, and we're going to touch upon that tonight too. Whenever a trader comes up to me after a seminar and asks me a money manager question, I know that trader has either made it or is close to making it. So money management, very important to control the losses. If things get a little choppy and you're not seeing a whole lot of setups, you might need to sit on your hands a little bit. Some people are craving action. Just last September, somebody quit the service. What's wrong? It's like, well, it's not enough action for me. It's like, well, we're not in this business for action. We're in this business to make money. And you'd be surprised how many people confuse the two years ago, way back in the trading markets days, if the market wasn't doing well and it was just chopping around, I'd stop recommending setups because I personally wasn't taking any. So why should I put out fluff for everyone else? And this was way back in 2001 or 2000. I forget exactly when. And back then we had salespeople and they would call me up and say, Dave, you got to you got to start recommending stuff. We're losing clients. And if if I recommended stocks and they were losing money, the, the stocks that, that uh, the bad recommendations, that is, we wouldn't lose clients. But if I wouldn't recommend anything because there was nothing to do, then we'd lose clients. So that taught me very early on that people are craving action. But I stay true to form and I'm not going to recommend crap just for the sake of recommending something. Now, a very I like to boil things down. And one thing that hit me a few years ago is why trend follow? And the reason is it's because where it's where the money is. So even if you are a contra trend trader, you have to be a trend follower for at least some length of time. Otherwise, you would not get paid. So my thinking is why not be a trend follower all the time? Now, this is pretty simple stuff here, but you'd be surprised at how many people make it a lot more complex than it has to be. All you have to do, I know, haha, -ha, but all you have to do is sell a market higher than you buy it. So from A to B is a trend. And if you're shorting markets, which we occasionally will do, we have one short of the portfolio open right now and the rest are longs, but you do have to cover that market shorter than you sold it, or, I'm sorry, lower than you sold it in order to profit from the trade. Now, it's a very simple approach. And if you understand this next slide, you understand the entire methodology. No, that's a joke. But you'd be surprised at how many times I'll get charts that look like that from people asking me questions about the chart. And I'll say, wait a minute, I can't even see the chart anymore. So I believe that I think uh, Leonardo da Vinci said it the best. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And then Occam's razor also comes to mind, too. One should not increase beyond what is necessary. The number of entities required to explain anything. And there's quite a few other really good quotes when it comes to keeping things simple. Um, you know, it, you really should be able to draw a methodology or a trading system on a cocktail napkin and explain it in a few sentences. Now, the question is, should you trade for short term or longer term gains? Now, ironically, as I'm doing this presentation, I'm looking outside and I'm in central time zone, so it's not quite dark yet. But it is getting dark quickly, and it's not because the sun's going down. It's because it's getting a little cloudy outside, and I hear some thunder off in the distance. So I'd be willing to bet that it's going to be raining soon. So predicting the markets is sort of akin to predicting the weather. You could predict short-term what the market might do with a fair degree of accuracy, but predicting longer term becomes tougher and tougher. Now, don't get nervous because I've got a little uh, statistics in here. And statistics are worthless. I think 74.3% of people know that. But I did look back in time, and this is the Metastock chart, and it's made, uh, this is what's called a probability cone, and this is the 50-day historical volatility. Don't get too caught up in the math. It's just a measurement of volatility. But you can see that that parabola, easy for me to say, 
parabola laid on its side it gets bigger and bigger and bigger the further you go out in time. Now, don't worry about using this new trading. This is just for illustrative purposes only. But my point is, the further out in time you go, the more uncertain your forecast will be. So you got to remember that markets don't adhere to statistics, and that's a whole another conversation altogether. But they can be useful in a case like this, this to illustrate what the potential for the market might be. Now, I'm slotted as a swing trader, which means trade. I trade and try to profit within three to seven days, but I actually trade for a longer time frame too. But let's talk about short-term forecast at first. Like it's cloudy, like predicting the weather, if it's cloudy and thundering, you know there's a pretty good chance it's going to rain soon. And, and same thing when it comes to markets. If you have some short-term patterns, especially if they're backed with some longer-term patterns, you know that there's a chance that that market might take off. Now, some of my clients, or at least one particularly, misunderstood me from saying that you could only predict the short term. He thought that I meant I could always predict the short term, and and trust me, I can. If I could, then I'd probably would just uh, you know sit on my boat and and uh, just have a um, whatever a beer. <laughs> so, uh, but the the one. You can only predict the short term when it comes to markets, no matter what anyone says. If somebody goes on TV and says the market's going to be higher a year from now, then they should sell all their worldly possessions and dump them into the market because the market's going to be higher a year from now. Obviously, a lot of stuff could happen between now and then. So when you are short-term trading, one, one of the things of beauty is, is that your risks are better defined and they're much smaller than longer term trading. Now here's the unfortunately, and there's actually two big unfortunately, and this one I never really thought about too much until in more recent times, but unfortunately it just doesn't make enough. The real money is in longer term trends. Trends take time to develop. It may be weeks, months, and sometimes even years for a major, major trend to develop. And you gotta remember that something bad could always happen. Now if you go back and look at a few columns ago, a few weeks ago, I wrote about like an anthill strategy. If you're just making a little bit of money, a little bit of money, that money will build over time. But if you get a big footprint that comes in, like an anthill, you'll erase all of those gains. And if you survive that, and if it doesn't erase your account, then it's very hard psychologically to build that back up. So short-term trading is still, even though the chances of a black swan event, uh, to leave black swan, meaning something really bad happening over a short period of time, even the chances of that are much less, they still can happen. Now, here's the deal. Longer term trading is where the money is, okay? Unfortunately, the longer the forecast, the less accurate you will be. And also, the drawdowns are going to be extremely big. You're going to give back a lot of money. As I often say, we all like to read about these famous longer term traders. I've got the books here. I read about them on the Internet all the time. But one thing that they fail to mention is a lot of these guys subsequently blow up, okay? So what good is that unless you quit right before you blow up? You make a bunch of money, and then you blow up. So that does you no good. Psychologically, that could really mess with your head. So the question is, should you trade for short-term or longer-term gains? And my answer to that question is yes. So can you have your cake and eat it too? And I think the answer is definitely yes. You trade for a small, quick gain, but be willing to stick with a portion of the position as long as it moves in your favor. Now, this is a little bit of a dated example, but keep in mind, this trade stayed open for nearly three years. So we've got a nice little persistent uptrend here, which I'm going to show you the pattern in just one second. You got a nice little pullback. Pretty textbook in nature. If you didn't know anything, you could draw an arrow and draw a line through the bars, which I'll show you how to do in just one second. I guess I just did. And then you can see there was a nice little short-term gain in here and also a nice little longer-term gain, and it went stock went on for years. Now, we did get stopped out, and I think I checked on this one a while back, and it actually had a pretty good run, and it's gone quite a long ways even since then. So if we could have survived that uh, stop, we'd still be in it. And would have been a really, really incredible trade. But still, 
three years or two and a half plus years is still a pretty good trade if you're making 100 percent 150 percent on a trade so the secret is you want to turn from a trader to a trend follower you need to start here and then you want to end up here remember this is where the money is and this is where the less risk and more accuracy is so you're in effect converting that position from a short-term swing trade position into a longer term position and that's the secret sauce if you don't walk away with anything tonight other than you should trade markets that are in obvious trends or obvious emerging trends then know this the secret sauce is being able to turn that short-term trade into a longer-term trade now when we get into a trade and most of the methodology is pullback related so we're looking for a strong trend and then a pullback and i'll give you some exact patterns in one second to trade when you get into a strong trend i'm sorry when you get into a, a swing trade you want to take that quick little profit fairly soon ideally within a few days now sometimes it takes a little bit longer and i'm going to show you some examples here in just one second but that's okay the market doesn't always adhere to your time frame as you probably know if you've been trading for more than a couple days initially we're stair stepping this stop higher almost on a one for one basis if it goes up a point we go up a point okay now once we hit our initial profit target we're going to move that stop up to break even i uh, got a question a couple days ago what if that's intraday yes intraday you would actually move that stop otherwise you would only move your stop on a closing basis so you don't have to watch every little tick it does help to be able to watch the open in case you have to apply a little discretion and occasionally it does help to maybe have an alarm in place just in case you're getting close to the stop in case you need to take some action but for the most part you're better off not watching a screen at least with my methodology i think busy traders make good traders i have a doctor friend i like to pick on all the time because if he doesn't have a lot going on he day trades and he loses money every time he day trades but when he gets busy with clients, he goes back to swing trading, to intermediate term trading, using this hybrid approach of mine, and he starts making money again. So it's just a thing of beauty. Busy traders, at least with my methodology, can make for good traders. So again, here's like a little setup here. We'll go into details of these in just one second. But you want to go from a trader getting that short term profit out to becoming a trend follower. And again, the secret sauce is allowing that stop to widen out and taking some partial profits along the way. So this is going to decrease your drawdown, but you're still going to have a big enough position on to make it worthwhile. So again, you get in somewhere back here, take a little quick profit, bump that stop up at least to break even, and then you begin to work your way, work the stop higher, let it gradually widen down. Now we've got plenty of examples to show you, so just – Hang tight. Um, I know not everybody can stay all night, so let me just give you the promo code before we go any further for those of you who have to take off. Uh, the promo code is 40 off. And if you go to DaveLander.com trading service, and then if you look about halfway down the page right above the monthly rate, there is an introductory rate. Click on that and then uh, use the uh, promo code 40 off. And I'm going to explain this in a little more detail when we get to the end of the slideshow. But I just want to give you guys, for those of you who have to leave, I want to give you that promo code. Now, let's talk about predicting the short term. And I'm going to say part one because there's two pieces to predicting the short term when it comes to the market. Markets tend to oscillate between overbought and oversold. So if a market is oversold, it's due to bounce. And if a market is overbought, it's due to sell off. Now, that sounds pretty good at least in theory. But in theory, theory and practice are the same. And in practice, they are not. That's why I like to teach, and then I like to show you with real examples. Now, before I get too far ahead of myself, uh, it's been said before, and I'm not sure to, to who to credit this to, but it's been said before that it's like walking a dog on a leash. Uh, yeah, if it gets to one side of the sidewalk, it will tend to be added back to the other side. But every now and then, that leash will break. And then overbought can become super duper overbought, for lack of a better technical term. And oversold can become super duper oversold. It overshoots itself. I know of methods out there that say, well, you know, just wait for a market to become super duper oversold and buy it. Well, that'll work 
until it don't. Okay. Trust me on that. Sometimes, I mean, you'll, you'll start trading something like reversion to the mean. You'll think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. You might be profitable for nine months in a row. Okay. And then all of a sudden, a couple of trades wipes you out because the people who trade the true mean reversion will tell you don't use stops. Okay. Now, I wanted a few guys out there that will tell you to use stops and preach stops. I probably preach the fact that there could be losses more than anyone else out there. I probably would make a lot more money in my educational business if I told everyone that I have the secret formula and don't worry about losses because they will be none, right? Well, there will be losses, unfortunately. Now, so a while back, I was talking with an engineer friend of mine and he was in a chat room that I was part of and he goes Dave you're anti mean reversion but you're a mean reversion trader I'm like oh those are fighting words and then it dawned on me he was right now this guy trades mean reversion but he uses stops so I have respect for him because he knows that sometimes they just don't come back and you have to just be willing to get out of the way so good for him but he's right I do trade mean reversion in the direction of the trend or reversion to the mean in the direction of the trend. That's a fancy way of saying I trade pullbacks. So if I identify a solid uptrend, which I'll show you how to do in just one second, and that market begins to sell off from that uptrend and begins to rally back up from that oversold condition, I know there's a pretty good chance this thing may pop back up to overbought. And if it does, I'll look to take a short-term swing trade profit, okay, and then – Trail that stop higher for what hopefully turns out into a longer term gain. Okay, now, this is the same thing on the short side. It's going to make a little bit more sense with actual examples. Now, getting back to that probability cone thing, that cone gets bigger and bigger and bigger the further out you get in time. So we know if we get a trigger in here, that reversion to the bead is fairly certain, okay? But we don't know if... It's going to be a longer-term trend. I just heard a little more thunder while I'm talking. So I'm fairly certain it's going to rain here probably before I'm done with this webinar. But will it be raining this time next week or this time next year? I don't know. So the longer you forecast, the tougher it will be. But that's okay. You don't have to worry about this. That will take care of itself via a trailing stop. Okay. So this is the entire methodology in a nutshell. And if you get this, you get the whole methodology. We're looking for a strong trend or an emerging trend. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And then we're looking to enter if and only if the market begins to rally up. So let's say the market rallies and then dies. Then there is no trade, okay? And you'd be surprised how many losing trades you could miss. And that's something that I can't quantify. But if you miss enough losing trades, all you're left with is the winner. And if you miss a losing trade, when you get a winner, that winner is going to be that much bigger because you're not digging yourself out of a hole. Now, it's not the most eloquent way, of, eloquent way of putting it, but it makes a lot of sense. And by the way, at more recent times, I tend to use a little bit more liberal entry. Now, I've got this little textbook entry here right above the high but in reality my entry is probably gonna be up here somewhere so if this market begins to rally significantly let's say the market maker manipulates the market oh my goodness did i see manipulation i can't say that well trust me markets are manipulated but that's okay they're trying to push that market up get these swing traders sucked in okay so they could spit them back out and make some money well that's okay so I keep that liberal entry in there, and I'm surprised at how many times that market will come right up to my liberal entry and then implode, and then that's no trade. But, you know, human nature also, the trading psychology and, uh, and the greed often rears its ugly head because I'll have a very liberal entry up here, or maybe even higher than that, I should say, maybe up here somewhere, and then clients will be entering way down here. It's like, no, you, you, no, why'd you do that? Well, I thought I would get in early. Don't try to outsmart the market. We don't get paid for being right. We get paid for doing the right thing and making money, okay? I hope I said that right. Uh, we don't get paid to look smart, okay? So, again, 
you, you stair step that stop a little, you know, almost on a one for one basis. You get those partial profits and then you let this slowly widen out. So it all boils down to identifying a trend or a significant change in trend and then entering that trend on a pullback related pattern. Money, and manage, money management and position management is crucial. And then trading psychology, your ability to follow and execute that plan. If you come to the weekly Week in Charts shows, Dave Landry's The Week in Charts every Thursday at 11 Eastern, you'll know that many of the shows I spend talking about psychology. And I think that's probably the next course I will do is a full-blown psychology course. But if you want to get most of that course or a lot of what I have to say, you can probably find it on, on YouTube. Not to talk you out of the course, but I think it's going to be pretty good, though, when I get around doing that. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on this because I've talked about it quite a bit, but just know that if a market's going sideways, you can draw an arrow. If it closes, let's say, at 20, and then a month later it closes at 20, there's no trend there. But when it begins to break out of a base, you could have a trend developing. We're not breakout players, so we're not going to buy that breakout unless it's something like an IPO where we have some specific breakout patterns. But that's a, another discussion. But what we will do is we'll look to see if it can follow through, and then we'll look to get long in that first little pullback. And there's a lot of little what I call trend follow well, trend follows trend qualifiers, such as strong closes and gaps and laps and things of that. I feel like on a swatch of and things of that nature in the direction of the trend. Also, wide range bars are important. If the bars begin to start widening widening out, that's hard to say then it means that more and more people are getting excited about that market. Now, notice that we had a pretty decent trend here, and then all of a sudden the market shot higher, but then came right back in. That's the first sign that it might be in trouble. And then you had a wide range bar down. Then you had a little pullback in here. And this was a pattern I call a first thrust, and this stock no longer exists if you're trying to pull it up. It's actually a company that went bankrupt. So now one of the most powerful patterns out there is persistency and I'm, I'm always amazed and this is what I love about teaching is the more I teach the more I see things more clearly like persistency and the markets I was in Italy uh, uh, I guess a few months back times moved so fast and I was uh, when, when the chart was up on the big screen and I was talking about certain things in the chart and it just kind of hit me like a ton of bricks that there was just a very little short-term persistency in this chart and seeing it on a 10-foot screen made me realize how important that concept is, even down to like a several day level. And persistency is something I'm only, re only really focused on over, let's say, like a one month period. But even shorter periods are just really incredible. It can really help you determine a trend and a great to trade. So mathematically, it's equivalent, easy for me to say, to linear regression. OK, I like to just draw a line through as many bars as possible. And you can see the examples I use tonight. We're going to have a lot of persistency uh, to them. Now, moving averages are pretty useful too, but keep in mind that we'll have some lag. And there's two things you want to look for with moving averages is slope and daylight. And those are very simple concepts. Daylight is just the lows are greater than the moving average. I'm going to date myself. In 1995, I wrote an article Stocks and Commodities on a simple little moving average breakout system. That's before I was a big mean reversion guy, but I was just doing a little simple trend following system to use on the Japanese yen. And I think my goal was to set out to prove that a simple trading system could work. And I think, it, I, think I achieved that goal. Anyway, one of the readers really liked the concept of the lows being greater than the moving average and he dubbed it daylight. So that's why I used that, um, that term. Slope is also important too. Keep in mind, there's going to be a little lag and slope, but with daylight, there's not lag because it's a price movement above, okay? And keep in mind, with any indicator, there's going to be lag because it's based on price. So always look at price first. Notice that these moving averages started rolling over and coming together, but this market had already lost over 50% of its value. So be careful with moving averages, especially if a market is making an abrupt move. Always pay attention to the price. But you can see you had daylight here. And then these are my bow tie moving averages. I like a 10 simple because it gives me a true representation of the last 10 days. And then I like a 20 exponential because it catches up the price a little quicker. 
Uh, one thing I mentioned Greg earlier, Greg Morris, he taught me that uh, it's it, this is probably why the bow tie pattern works so well. And I didn't even realize this. As soon as the market moves above its exponential moving average, that exponential moving average will tick up. So that's kind of a really neat concept. And that's a little that's a pretty cool takeaway. So, again, even if you just use like a simple 10 day moving average, which is just the price you count, uh, you add up 10 days and then you divide by 10. OK. Notice that in this particular case, we had daylight. You had one little kiss right here to that moving average. And then this market continued higher. So if all you did was look for daylight and not just not just a crossing above and below because you end up chasing your own tail. But if you look for several days to maybe several weeks of daylight combined with persistency, you would do really well and you would be generally on the right side of the market. Now, this this um, this just kind of hit me over the head a few weeks ago when I was looking at this and I wrote about it in um, my blog on DaveLander.com. I hate the word blog. Uh, it's a column, okay? Blogging is for a kid in his basement, right? But anyway, it kind of hit me over the head. And one thing that I realized in the um, by speaking – and again, the more it's like the more I, I look at charts, the more I teach, the more I learn. Is that everything works better with trend? I'll see somebody get up and they'll show a system, and it's buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, and, and it's like there'll be uh, let me just start over. There'll be a market that looks like this, and they'll have like a hundred buys and sells with the trading system. And if they just followed the trend, they'd have one buy and one sell, and it could eliminate a lot of the fluff in between. But what's kind of cool is if you look at the last, I think this is about a 70% to almost 200% move, 100% move in the S&P 500, you only had about five days of daylight, meaning that the lows, I'm sorry, the high is below the moving average. And then the rest of the time, notice that the lows for this entire period of time, except for a few days here, were above the moving average. Now, I'm not saying rush out and build the system just on this. But as a general rule, let's say you're looking at some stocks. You don't know whether you want to buy the stocks or not. You got a nice little trend. Sector's doing pretty good. Well, look at the overall market. Is there daylight in the overall market? Is the overall market doing pretty good to the upside? Then by all means, you might want to buy the stock. And of course, again, keep it simple. Don't forget to draw your arrows. And this is the actual back of my business card. If you send me send me a self-addressed stamped envelope, just so I don't have to worsen my carpal tunnel, P.O. Box 298. And um, Abita Springs, Louisiana. And I'll send you a card. I, I'm surprised at how many people have asked for cards. And it's a, tape it to your monitor. And if you find yourself trying to figure out if it's a fifth of a third or a third of a fifth in a wave count or some sort of arcane uh, uh, square root of some little counting number and you can't figure it all out, then just ask yourself, is the market going up? Is the market going down? And the third most important question, maybe the first most important question you need to ask yourself is, is the market just going sideways? You'd be surprised at the amount of emails I get from people. And I'm going to touch upon this again in a second. So, But the stock will look like this, okay? And they're like, hey, Dave, should I buy this stock? And it's like, well, let's see. It was over here a year ago, and now it's here. It's like it's not absolutely nothing. That's probably a bad example, but it'll look like this, absolutely sideways. There is no trend, okay? Well, there's a trend if you consider sideways movement to trend. So you don't want to be trading that market. Now, there's three phases of trend. There's trend resumption, trend acceleration, and emerging trend. Tonight, we want to just focus on a couple of patterns on trend resumption. And I want to talk a little bit about one of my favorite patterns on emerging trends. Very important to recognize emerging trends, okay? Uh, early in my career, all I was worried about was trend resumption. And then I quickly learned that you need to know when a trend is coming to an end 
and a new one may be getting because that could create some wonderful opportunities. So trend resumption, just your generic pullback. Emerging trend, you have a market that bottoms out. And I purposely drew it like a cup and handle because they often will look like a cup and handle. And then you look at the trade, that first little pullback. Sometimes uh, trends will begin with more of a bang. That's a pattern I call a first thrust. But we're going to focus mostly on the gradual emerging trends tonight. Now, here are some of my favorite setups. Uh, generic pullbacks, we talk about pullbacks all night, okay? So that's that's what a generic pullback's going to look like. But there's two, especially when you combine these two, persistent pullbacks and trend knockouts. Now, those of you know me, like, is he talking about trend knockouts, TKOs, and, and persistent pullbacks again? It's like, yeah, because they work, and it's a good pattern. It's such an easy pattern, okay? So – that's the rules, but let's just look at an actual chart. Now, this is zoom way in, and when I show you the next chart, you'll see it'll make more, much more sense. But you want this bar to take out at least two bars, okay? That's the textbook rule. But you also want it to do that on an expansion of range, okay? Now, sometimes you can actually trade these things in a textbook manner. If this is a very good wide range bar, you could put your entry right above the high and stop right below, excuse me, below the low. And that could be a really beautiful thing. And here's a pretty good example of that. You can see this market's at a very, very, very persistent trend. Gets a little bit ahead of itself, has a nice little knockout move. And then from that, it took off and doubled or tripled from that level. Now, here's one that was... Uh, nearly every example in here, I think that's that one might not have been, but nearly every example I'm going to show you tonight has been recommended in my trading service. And then we're going to look at the open portfolio in a few minutes too. But you can see this market's in kind of a gradual uptrend. There's really no setup here. There's nothing to do. But then it begins to accelerate higher and persist higher. And notice that it made this nice little knockout move. Now, if you enlarge this here, you can see this is the wide range bar. Your entry's here, and your stop is there. I think if all you did was trade this one pattern, I think you'd do really well. And I think you'd also sit on your hands a lot waiting for that pattern. But don't confuse action with being a good trader and doing the right thing. Now, for a persistent pullback, we're looking again for that nice little persistent move. The market goes up day after day after day. By the way, I will say market because... Markets are markets. I'll use that term interchangeably. I prefer trading stocks because they're more inefficient and have the potential to make very big moves. But I'll also trade Forex and other markets. But publicly, uh, as far as like my trading service, we focus on inefficient stocks. Usually every now and then there's something efficient in there, such as right now we're long USO because it looks like we could have a major bottom in the oil in oil stocks. And again, persistency, you just draw a line through as many bars as possible. And I'll elaborate on that um, in just one second. But notice here you have a nice little persistent uptrend day after day after day. And you get a little bit of a pullback in here. So it's a very easy pattern to recognize. And getting back to that CLDX example, notice that you can draw a line almost through all the bars in here. I bet if I worked a little harder, I probably could. And then you've got the, tech, the TKO in here. So that was a very good um, setup. By the way, the great thing about persistent pullbacks is they self-regulate. And in 2008, when the market just headed down all the way until, I guess it was March of 2009, I couldn't find any buy side setups with the persistent pullback. So if all you were doing was trade that one pattern, and I know I've said this a thousand times, but it just amazes me. It's exciting. But if all you would do is trade that one pattern, you would probably be eating 99% or 95% of all the money managers out there who just followed the market down and lost a lot of money. But that's another story. Anyway, with an emerging trend, we're looking for an old trend to end and a new one to begin. Your best emerging trends come off of all-time highs or at least multi-year highs or all-time lows or multi-year lows. If you're going to trade an efficient market, 
like the currencies, okay, or commodities, then you want to focus mostly, or I would recommend you focus mostly on emerging trends off of major highs and major lows. And again, you can sit on your hands a lot, but that's okay. So we're not trying to pick a top or trying to pick a bottom, but we're looking for signs that that top may be in place or that bottom may be in place. And we're looking to trade the first little correction. Now, with a generic pullback, we're looking for something nice and deep to make sure some people are knocked out. In fact, I even called one of my patterns the trend knockout. You want people to be knocked out. You want the shorts to be attracted to the market, and you want the nervous Nelly Longs to be knocked out of the market. By the way, that's a good litmus test for a trend knockout. If you get knocked out of the market, if your stop gets hit, or if you're looking at the market and think, where would my stop be? And, yep, it would have hit my stop. Then that's probably a pretty good TKO. For those of you who've been in the service a long time, you'll know that sometimes we'll get knocked out of a move. I think SCTY is a good example of that, if memory serves. We'll get knocked out of a move at a profit, okay, knocked out of position. And then by the end of the day, I'll recommend it for that same position going into the next day. That doesn't happen that often. That's kind of a rare type of thing. But it can happen to where we get knocked out of the market. And the next day, it looks pretty good again. Now, bow tie, one of my favorite patterns, probably favorite pattern of uh, of of others, my all-time favorite pattern. And I call it a bow tie because your moving averages are coming together, and then they begin to spread out again, and it sort of looks like a bow tie when they do that. So you want the moving averages to go from one order, 10 below 20, below 30, to another order. 10 above 20, above 30. When that happens over a short period of time, it gives the appearance of a bow tie, okay? So this is what it looks like in a real chart. You can see the 10s below the 20, below the 30. And they cross over over a fairly short period of time, or I should say when they cross over a short period of time, this actually suggests that the cycles may have changed. And this is what I call uh, my feeding strategy. But with the feeding strategy, all we're looking for is a market that just that's just going been going down for years or months at least to bottom out to make a nice solid bottom and then we're looking for that bow tie to form these should be fairly obvious notice back here these moving averages were sloppy and this market came back in and it just kind of went back and forth back and forth back and forth and then finally at this juncture here they came together very nicely and it was also a pattern i call a first thrust notice this nice persistent and accelerating move from lows and then notice a little bit of a pullback here to those of you who understand and studied, I have studied classical technical analysis, you've got a major double bottom here. We don't trade off of major double bottoms or any other classical technical analysis pattern. But what we do is we look for a setup such as this over here after we have identified the major pattern. Now, I'm not sitting here looking at this stock every day going, is today today, today today, today today? No, I'm not doing that. I'm flipping through these charts pretty quickly every night. I go through about 2,000 charts a night, and I'm doing that really fast. It's not taking me um, six hours to go through those charts. Now, I'll spend about two hours and maybe more on my analysis, but I can get through those charts fairly quickly because this type of pattern will jump out at me when I see it. And after you go through a few thousand charts a night for about 10 years, it, it should jump out at you too, and maybe it won't take you that long. But I figured it out the other day. I think I've looked at 10 million charts at least in my career. And that may be a, an underestimate, believe it or not. But if you zoom this in, this is what it looks like. You can see everything comes together at a nice little tight fulcrum point. And, of course, the market's also accelerating higher. It pulls back a little bit. This is a, a solar stock, back when the solar stocks bottomed out. And, uh, oh, geez, when was that? I sound like I'm from Fargo. Oh, geez, 2011, I think, or maybe 2012. Anyway, uh, money and position management cannot be separated from the methodology. And this is becoming more and more crucial, I think, that you cannot separate the money and position management. So you're identifying that short-term move, and that's good. And everybody's a setup junkie. And, I, you know, I used to be a setup junkie too. Guilty as charged. But if I'm giving a, a, a seminar where I'm actually in person – and after the seminar, the stage gets rushed a little bit, I guess. Some people come up and 
and, and a lot of people ask me about setups, and that's fine. And I, I'm passionate about what I do, and I love my setups. But when somebody comes up and asks me a money management question, I know that, that trader's either made it or is close to making it. And this is why I preach so much about money management. It's very, very, very important. And it cannot be separated from the methodology. I don't think it can be separated from any methodology, but in my methodology, I've kind of interwoven it, woven it, it kind of dovetails in to the methodology. Now, never forget, and I'm going to touch upon this in one second in a little more detail, that your best defense is a good offense. If you're picking the best stocks to begin with, then you're going to get stopped out less. And psychologically, it's going to much, be much, much, much easier to follow that plan. I did a the missing piece that I discovered in the methodology, uh, I guess a year or two ago, was the stock selection. And I talked about it in the books, but I realized that I didn't put enough emphasis on it and I didn't talk about it enough. So I did a 14-hour course just on stock selection. And you could just start looking at a lot of charts if you want to get good at stock selection. That would be the first thing you could do, and you could do that for free. Uh, once you're in a trend, just let things unfold. If those of you who come to the, the weekend charts, you'll know about once every few months or just whenever the setups, uh, whenever the patterns unfold, I'll show you a stock that we're in that went sideways for two or three months, sometimes even longer. And then, bam, took off. We had one go up 25% just the other day after going sideways for eight weeks. And a lot of people say, oh, that's dead money. I can't, I, can't, I can't sit on that stock. It's not making me money. Well, sometimes the market doesn't move, again, as I said earlier, on your time frame. Sometimes these moves take time to develop. So be willing to stick it out. And I'm show you a great example here in just one second. And then again, we're going to loosen those stops as it moves more and more of our favor, in our favor. Now, we're willing to give up a little bit of that open profit or a little bit more of that open profit. But we already took partial profits out. People often ask me, Dave, is your money management psychological or statistical? And my answer to that is yes. Now, some people say, well, you got a, you got a smaller position on in, in, in these big trends. So what? It's still going to be enough. If you make... 500% on a trade, even if it's just half the size of a swing trade, so what? Okay? And if you just make um, a few percent on the first trade and you get stopped out, that's what I call a better than a poke in the eye trade. Okay? And the other thing you need to do, again, is this is not to pat myself on the back, but this is probably the most brilliant thing I've ever thought about or ever said. Obsess before you get into a trade, not afterwards. So you definitely want to plan that trade and trade your plan. Once you're in a trade, and again, as I often say, trading done properly can be boring. You just sit there day after day after day after day. And then eh, you get a day like a couple days ago where something pops up 25% overnight. And that's kind of exciting. That's kind of fun. But for the most part, you just kind of sit it out. Now, the other thing to realize is you have to be willing to take out, take, give up some of those open profits. You can't mentally monetize those profits and think about what you could buy with them, okay? You just, you have to have a trading account and you have to be willing to trade that account and realize that that trading account is for capital growth. And at any time you choose, obviously, you could take somebody out of the account, but don't make a decision that has nothing to do with the market. Don't say, oh, I'm up 50%. How many times does it go up more than 50%? I better take that profit. And then like Tom McClellan's mother said, Marion McClellan, people buy stocks for a variety of reasons. People buy stocks when they have money. People sell stocks when they need money. People buy and sell stocks for those reasons. And some people use far more sophisticated methods. And that's a little paraphrase. But you get the idea, okay? So markets go up and markets go down. And sometimes there's no logic to them. But you have to be willing to not let your own personal psychology interfere. Yeah, I said I wouldn't get into psychology. And here I am. But here's the thing. If you quit at 25%, you'll never make 
roughly 50%. If you quit at 50%, you'd never make 100%. And if you quit at 100%, you'd never make 200%. Now, this position did stop out at about 150-something percent. So what? You gave up a little profit, but from here all the way to here, that's a pretty darn good trade. If that happened on every trade, you would own the world pretty quickly. So you have to be willing to lose a little of those open profits. Now, I've yet to come up with a better way of saying this, and I guess one day I should think before I do another webinar. But you're playing with the market's money, for lack of a better word, because you did get your initial profit out, and you did get that stop to break even. And now, once you get this far along, anytime you get stopped out, you're going to be getting stopped out at a profit. Okay? So – Sometimes, again, you'll have a little dead money in here, but so what? If you could just make a base after base after base. So it's better to have loved and, and lost a little bit of those open profits than to never have loved at all. Look at where you are here and look at where you are here. Now, a money manager was saying, oh, my clients would complain. Well, so what? Do the right thing. In longer term, you'll make a, a lot of money. Okay? Now, another way of looking at that is, okay, we're private traders. We can do whatever the hell we want. We don't have to worry about other people telling us what to do. So tough it out. Stick with those positions unless you're stopped out. Now, tough it out doesn't mean, oh, it's going down. You let it go down. You go down, go down, go down. You, you let all your profits evaporate. What you do is you let that stop take you out, and you'd be willing to give up some of those open profits. Now, not enough time to get, get into all the money management, but if you just get an idea – of a few things I'm saying here, I think it's a, it's it's enough to get your head wrapped around it. We're risking a small amount on each position, and that's two percent. Okay, now work into this two percent number. Don't start trading two percent per trade if stopped out. Okay, and this is why I put be consistent in here. You're starting out maybe a quarter percent on every trade until you get profitable. If you're not profitable trading a quarter percent on every trade, you're certainly not going to be profitable trading two percent on every trade. Okay. But the worst thing you could do, and I see this all the time, is people are inconsistent. They risk 2% on a trade, they lose. So then they risk a quarter of a percent on a trade, and then it turns into a huge winner. Okay? So they're like, oh, well, maybe I'll risk 2% on the next trade. What happens? They lose again. So work into that 2% on a very slow, uh, gradual way. You can get into a lot of trouble at 2%. Okay? That, that, that's a, that can get you into a lot of trouble. So make sure you got a really good stock selection once you reach that 2% point. And I'll show you what it looks like in just one second. Now, you get stopped out, you get stopped out, okay? Uh, one or two big winners can make all the difference in the world. Sometimes when I'm having my best period ever in the service, somebody will quit. And I'm like, well, we're doing great. What's going on? Well, I can't make any money. Well, I can't make any money. I mean, look at this stock. It's going up 50%. Well, I didn't get that one. Okay, well, what about this one? We're up 100%. Well, I didn't get that one. Well, what did you take? Well, I took this stinker and that stinker and another stinker you recommended. It's like, well, you're not going to make money if you're just taking a bunch of losing trades, okay? You have to be willing to take all the trades you see, if it's viable, knowing that you're going to catch those occasional big winners. And then, yeah, you're going to get stopped out here and there, but longer term, you're going to catch some really big winners, and that's where the money is. And then also, like I said earlier, sometimes you might have to sit on your hands, but that's okay, okay? And again, we're taking a partial profit, okay? And that's half. We're taking off half of the position. So that's a sizable part of the position for a swing trade. And the reason we do that is because sometimes the market will do this. It'll come back in. And when we have three or four of these in a row where we get in, we make a little money, get stopped out at scratch, rinse and repeat, people will email me. Dave, we should have just kept 100%. Well, hindsight's 2020. okay? We should have exited, I'm sorry, 100% here. And when the market's doing this, people are like, well, why can we hold on to 100%? Well, you never know where you get this or this. Life is uh, it's kind of like Forrest Gump when it comes to markets. It's a bit of a box of chocolates. You're never sure what you're going to get. But if you stick with it longer term, chip away, chip away, chip away, then eventually you get this, and you get some really nice gains out of it, okay? So if you do hit the initial profit target and nothing happens, at least you make a quick little profit. And annualized, that could be not a bad little profit, okay, if you look at how much you made over the period of time. 
Now, again, as I said earlier, never forget that a good offense is your best defense. Pick the best and leave the rest. I spent 14 hours talking about this on a course. But the main thing you need to walk away with is a stock should not look like an electric cardiogram. And then also some of the things I talked about tonight. Look for classical technical patterns, but use triggers, of course, to enter. Triggers and setups. Anything that looks like an electric cardiogram, forget about it. Never forget about the power of persistency. Uh, seek out inefficiency. This is a little bit more involved discussion, but you're looking for stocks that have potential to make large moves. And then obviously seek out obvious trends or obvious emerging trends, okay? And then also avoid stocks, what I call bad memories. If you have a stock in a trading range and it sells off and then it has a setup right here, okay? Don't take the setup because when it hits this level here, all these people who bought or who bought the stock and are still holding it might be looking to get out at break even. Remember, everything I do is based on human psychology of reading the charts. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, Dave, you just showed us a bunch of stocks. Uh, were some of those cherry picked? Well, maybe a few of them, but they're wonderful examples, and I did see them in real time. But the question is, as Janet would ask, what have you done for me lately? And those of you who I did a similar presentation recently, I put this here just to make sure we didn't have any wardrobe malfunctions. Keep it PG-13. Too old for that joke, huh? <laughs> okay, uh, this is the actual open portfolio. I'm not going to spend too much time explaining all the details. Just know that we're looking for a small piece on the first half of the position. And hopefully what turns into a very large piece on the second half of the position. If you watch the weekend charts and you watch me go through this portfolio, every night in you might see like $15,000 down here. And there's like a $13,000 trade in here. And then the rest of them are kind of, eh, you got a couple losers and winners in here. But without that one big winner, this number would be much smaller. We're fortunate, knock on wood, at this point in time where we're not only accurate, but we have a few decent winners in here too. So it's looking pretty good. Now, like Bruno Mars says, don't believe me, just watch. So let's take a look at everything I just taught you tonight, and let's look at the open portfolio, okay? So what do we have here? This is the IPO, big fan of IPOs. We did a um, go on my website and uh, request the video or go to YouTube, and you can get it straight off of YouTube that we did a couple of weeks ago on IPOs. And you can see them, a big fan of IPOs. Nice little pullback, accelerating higher. We got a buy here. We took a little swing trade profit because we didn't know whether or not the trend materialized. And then it was a little dead money in here. So what? But then you could see it took off again recently, and maybe it's going to make another little box on top of a box. And again, this one's uh, this one's what I call a toddler. It's an IPO. It's been out for a little while, but you can see it didn't work out too well, right? Well, that's okay. But it came in here and they got their act together, made a nice big double bottom. We got a nice little persistent move higher, and we got a little pullback here. Okay, so when it begin when the trend began to resume itself, that's the buy. Of course, it's your trailing stop, just in case we're wrong. And all these are open, by the way. So a year from now, if you're watching this webinar, you'll say, "Hey, wow, that stock is now at sixty dollars a share." I remember when Dave was talking about that way back here. And again, take open profits, take partial profits, and then trail that stop higher. You get stopped out, you get stopped out, okay? Better than a poke in the eye is what I say. Or so long and thanks for all the fish. Uh, here's another one here. Um, this this arrow needs to be right here. You want to buy on this pullback here. I didn't notice that before. And, you know, it didn't, didn't really work out so well at first, did it? But so what? You got to stop down here. And then it began to get its act together and take off. Again, the market doesn't always move in your time frame. Psychologically, this is hard for many. Okay? But as you can see, it can be done. So we take partial profits, and we got to stop it here just in case. And again, we let that stop widen out, okay, to hopefully ride out a longer-term move. Look, here's a nice little bow tie. Look at this nice little, I would call it a triple bottom. Some people might call it three drives to a low. That's fine. You can call it whatever you want. It's kind of like a, see a pattern like this. Call it whatever you want. Just don't call me late for uh, dinner, right? Um, 
Nice little buy set up in here, a little pullback after that bow tie. This this type of pattern should just jump out at you. Okay, if it doesn't, look at a few thousand charts every night until it's it does. And we recently took partial profits in it. Now, this thing's kind of losing a little momentum in here. It still looks pretty good, though, but it's lost some steam. If it comes down, it stops us out, so what? Okay, at least we made something on the trade. But hopefully, and I hate to use the word hope in this business, but hopefully the stock goes on to double or triple from here. Another example here, a uh, nice little bottoming pattern here. Market begins to take off, kind of cup and handle looking. For those of you who are familiar with that classical technical analysis, as I said in the webinar about a week ago, the cup has been around for, well, all these patterns have been around forever, okay? But uh, the cup was written about many, many years ago. Read Schaubacher, read Edwards and McGee, and then read more modern classics like Pring. Uh, but William O'Neill popularized the cup and handle, so he gets credit for that. And again, when the market begins to rally out of that little cup and handle pullback, whatever you want to call it, you take partial profits or swing trade, and then you begin to trail your stop higher. This is a Chinese stock. I've been talking about second tier Chinese stocks. By second tier, I mean those Chinese stocks that have bottomed out. Now, some people say when pigs fly, could be the end of the bull run, and they might be right. But so what? If a market is going up and the market sets up, then buy it. Okay, and I've got a wonderful example for that in just one second. I'm kind of anxious to get to. But here's another example here. You can see a nice little run from lows. I think it was also a bow tie. Got a buy signal here, partial profits. It really hadn't done much since we took partial profits. This might turn into one of those, well, why do you take 100%? Well, because this thing might go up tenfold from here. Who knows? This is a Latin American uh, stock. By the way, the EWZ was set up recently as a bow tie. And that's, uh, I think that's Brazil. So these Latin American stocks have been on fire as of late. I actually got one little lonely shard in the portfolio. Now, this is UAL. This is a very efficient stock. This is a big stock, okay? Well analyzed and scrutinized. But efficient stocks, if you go to my website, there's an article. You might have to dig a little for it, but it's called Go Go Dobo. And that's what I'm thinking here is that a company that's very efficient, when they begin to sell off, they're overanalyzed, over scrutinized, and they, they can still make uh, substantial moves. But so far, we haven't made anything on this one, but this is the entry. Hasn't done anything right, hasn't done anything wrong just yet. We've got a profit target down here, and we've got to stop up here just in case. We get stopped out, we get stopped out. Okay. Here's the oil. Like I like talked about, oil can be very efficient because it's a commodity related, related market. Can, uh, efficient markets tend to chop around more than they trend. But as you can see, it's been in a pretty serious downtrend for a while, and then it bottoms out. You certainly don't want to try to buy it up here because it keeps dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. You don't want to try to catch that falling knife. But as the trend begins to turn, you get a bow tie, you get a nice little thrust from lows, a little pullback, a little double bottom, a little cup and handle. All these things come together. It was a pretty decent little entry here. And then we had a little gap open a few days ago, and we are able to get uh, partial profits out. And now we've got a trailing stop to hopefully ride out that trip for a long, long time. I said hope again, I know. I feel like the Knights of Knee. Said it again. We only got a couple more guys. Just hang in there. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, if you guys want to start asking questions, I'll, I'll start taking those too. Now, this is Greece. Okay. I don't follow the news, but I understand they have some problems over there. Okay. Well, it, this is what I call a Steve Winwood trade. If you see a chance, you take it. You've got one, two, three. Kind of like a triple bottom. Again, I'm not a huge fan of three drives to a low, but maybe after this setup works, I will be. But you can see triple bottom. Nice little bow tie here. Nice little quick pullback. And then it's done okay so far. I think we're barely in the black on that. But it's possible that they could get their act together over there. I'd rather buy a stock when everything's abysmal in the world than buy a stock when everything's perfect, when it's so-called price for perfection. Right now, drugs and biotech and all these stocks have been these longer-term trends, health services. I'm not as excited about those, although we do have some of the portfolio, but I'm not as excited about rushing out and buying some new ones right now because those trends are mature, and maybe they're coming to an end. It looks like they're losing a little steam in here. i got to keep an eye out, a watchful eye, to make sure we don't start getting some bow ties in some of those stocks and some of those sectors. In fact, we actually have so far. 
I'm not going to rush out and get super bearish just yet. I'm going to let things unfold one day at a time. But here's a pattern, and it looks pretty good. Um, by the way, uh, speaking of I'd rather buy something when, when everything is uh, bad, The uh, one of the stocks that I think we just stopped out of for a decent profit, I think it's TRIL, but it may be NVRO, which is also in the portfolio. Uh, but one of, the, one of the recent winners, I looked up the earnings just for S&Gs, and they had a – three dollar a share round number loss okay so the the fundamentals were absolutely visible but that's okay that means that stock is inefficient and in trading purely on emotions and i'll have to joke one day i'm going to build a system and the system is going to say hey i'm just going to trade stocks with bad fundamentals and i think by accident by just trading these technicals i already have um last stock here i think in the list uh you can see nice little bottom or second to last Nice little bottom in here, kind of that saucer handle pattern, kind of a little bit like a bow tie here. We got an entry, took partial profit. So far, so good. And we have a trailing stop in place to hopefully, and there's that word again, ride out a longer term trend. Now, uh, just a couple of more details about the methodology. Good questions. Keep the questions coming, and we'll we'll hop into the questions. And I'll stay until all questions are asked, are asked, answered. <laughs> um, there's a few more details to the methodology. Obviously, there's bow ties. We just talked about, but there's reversal gap strategy, first rush, which I kind of hinted at, accelerating momentum strategy, blah, 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 and a few other patterns. Stock selection, again, vitally important. Uh, you can learn that one chart at a time, uh, look at about 10 million charts, and I can help take the steepness out of that learning curve, obviously, by either A, following along with the service, or B, following along with the weekly charts and, um, and some of these other things that I'm doing. Now, it's a lot quicker, though, obviously, if you're if you're on the service because you're seeing the setups each day, and I explain them each day. Uh, there's a few discretionary techniques. Not enough time to get into them tonight, but I talk about them often. Uh, money management, again, vitally important. A little bit more than I talked about tonight. Uh, but the main thing there would be like a little bit of discretion. You have a brain in your head, so use it. Uh, like we had a stock that was at 9 and it rallied up. The stop was at nine, I should say. It rallied up. It came down and just barely hit nine, and then it took off. There was only like one trade at this level. So follow mechanically, yes, the stop got hit. But if you use a little common sense, it's like, well, it, it didn't really get below nine. It never bid below nine. So I'm sorry, it never asked below nine. So you could stick with the position. Then somebody says, well, why did I put the stop at 899? Well, if I do – that all I needed was one more penny than absolutely I would have get it. I thought I was pretty close at nine, but I was off by a penny. So discretion, keep in mind, this is uh, like a, a little bit higher level. Don't try to rush out and use a lot of discretion when you first get started. But once you understand how markets work and you get some success under your belt, then start slowly applying a little bit of discretion. Okay. And then obviously your mind is very important. Trading psychology, vitally important. Make decisions and live with them. This is probably the most important thing. So obsess before you get into that trade and then live with the trade, okay? Good, bad, or indifferent. In for a penny, in for a pound is what I tell um, my British clients. And it's much easily easier if you fully understand the money management and the methodology, okay? Your psychology becomes much easier because when you hit a drawdown, which you will with my methodology, and guess what? With anyone else's methodology too. At least with my stuff, I don't know if you guys can hear it, the, under, the lightning starting to pop here. Um, I told you it would rain. <laughs> At least with my methodology, you uh, if you understand that there's going to be some flat times and some choppy periods, then when those periods come along, you can say, okay, well, I'm going to just sit on my hands. I'm going to let my positions get stopped out, okay, and we'll see how things shake out. And then once I get completely stopped out, I'm completely flat, I'm out of all my positions, then you'd be amazed at how clearly you will be able to see the market. Well, you're probably thinking, well, hey, why don't I just get out when it starts getting choppy? Well, all those positions I just showed you, some of them have gone up 50% since this market started getting choppy back in February. Like I wrote three days ago, if you would have told me that the market would have peaked in February and just maybe just kind of barely touched that peak three or four months later, whatever it is, that uh, three months later, then I would have said, well, you know what? I would exit all my positions. But sometimes you're better off not knowing and just being that trend follower, okay? 
Now, uh, the store is open for business, davelander.com slash store, or if you go to my website, just click on products on the home page to get to the store. And then let me give you the offer again. So if you like what you heard, we have a special offer to everybody here. Uh, it ends on Friday. And I'll let, um, if you're not here tonight, I'll let you use it too. So if you want to tell a friend or phone a friend, that's fine. Um, so my core trading service is normally $127 a month. Uh, paid annually, it's a little bit cheaper, a lot cheaper. I'm trying to encourage people to stick with things longer term. Again, like I said, like the aforementioned client, that's just one guy. I'm not beating up on him. It happens all the time. And it happens with all methodologies too. People quit as soon as things get choppy and they never tough it out. If you have somebody else's methodology that's a viable methodology, then stick with it, okay? If you're trading my stuff, which is a viable methodology and it gets a little choppy, then stick with it. Just make sure you're doing all the things that I talked about tonight, okay? Now with the service, uh, even though this is a $7 intro rate, you're going to get full access to everything, which includes that spreadsheet I just talked about with all the money manage management and position management. And then I also um, put out daily actionable items. I don't know if you noticed in that service sheet that I had up there, but I did have a position that's blocked out, or I should say a setup that's blocked out. And the reason it's blocked out, it's just out of courtesy to my uh, current clients. But you're going to see everything that those uh, who are on the service for a month or a year or uh, for years are going to see with that. And what I like to do, I don't want it to be a tip sheet. I do put actionable items in there, but I also like to show you some ancillary setups and where I'm finding opportunities. Like right now, we've got some energies already in, in the portfolio, so we don't really need any more. But for those who are new to the service, I'm like, hey, guys, take a look at this particular energy. I like it. We've got enough. We don't need any more in the portfolio, but if you do the service, take a look at this one. Tonight we had like a Latin American stock. Well, we already got some Latin American stocks in the portfolio, but take a look at this one. So I like to throw out some ancillary ideas uh, every night. So that's what I call my Landry list. And again, I do a little color commentary in the overall market and do a lot of sector analysis and all where I'm finding opportunities and where I'm not. Uh, if you need help, I will give anyone a service precedent access to me. And that's, I answer all questions uh, directly related to the service. If they're more involved questions and outside of the service, then we'll cover them in the weekend charts. So again, use the promo code 40 off and I'll pull up that um, website for you while I take the questions. Okay, fantastic. A lot of questions coming in. Thank you, keep them coming. Okay, the question is, when you say risk 2% of your capital per trade, do you calculate just the risk or the value of the total position? A $10 stock, $2 risk, do you calculate off the $10 or the $2? No. Okay, Michael, good question. In what I track called the model portfolio, 2% means I take, I always have $100,000 in that model portfolio. Now, right now you're seeing about a $20,000, $20,000 worth of gains. But to keep the math simple, and it would work much better if I actually compounded it, but just for, for the service purposes, so nobody gets too confused, I assume there's always 100K in that account, precisely 100K in the account, okay? So 2% risk of 100K is $2,000. So every trade, I'm going to risk $2,000. Now, that does not mean you rush out and buy $2,000 worth of stock. You look at where the stop, the STOP is, based on the volatility of the market. And I do have two videos out there, I think, on YouTube just on setting stops, so you can get those for free. But you calculate how far that is away from your entry, and then you buy that many shares. So if you go back and watch recordings of this, when you go back to the portfolio, you'll notice in some cases, like that big – thick stock, that big um, high price stock UAL. We only had a couple hundred shares of that, but some of these lower price stocks, because the stop, the STOP wasn't that far away, the way the formula works is you end up trading more shares, okay? At what point does a bullish TKO become a, bear, a bearish first thrust or a gatekeeper? Well, that's, a, that's probably a, a question that's better for um, – for when we have a little bit more time, like in the weekend charts, but I, I, I understand what you're saying. Let me just 
pull it off of a deep pullback. Let's say you have a deep pullback and the market begins to rally but stalls out. Then that this could actually be a pioneer type of sell signal, pioneer, because that is a failed trend. When you have a market that's at a deep pullback and it begins to rally up, it's either going to roll back over or it's going to go back to its highs, okay? So, yes, a bullish pattern can turn bearish on you. So there's no exact point when that occurs, but if you get long a deep pullback, then you tough it out. You have your tra you have your trailing stop in place, and if you get stopped out, so be it. Now, if you don't take the trade and you see it looking, as you pointed out, the gatekeeper pattern, which we don't have time to go into tonight, but it's would stall short of that prior high, then if you want to take it as a short, then by all means, take it as a short, okay? So there's no set hard and fast rule. But I guess it would be if it stalls out well short of the prior high, then it becomes bearish, okay? Do you look at the broader market to stay on the right side of the market? Absolutely. Absolutely. And like I said earlier, we only had five days of daylight, okay? So we've been mostly long. Now, when that market was selling off a few months back or six months ago, whenever it was, we started seeing a few shorts setting up. We took a couple shorts. We had a couple longs, leftover longs. We left them in the portfolio. And some of those we've been rewarded nicely on. So you don't want to rush out and short the market. I'm sorry. You don't want to rush out and sell all your stock as soon as the market looks a little iffy. Let the stops take you out. Be willing to give up some of those open profits. Okay. But, yeah, absolutely. Ideally, you want to look at the overall market. And then you want to look at the sector. And then you want to look at the individual stocks. I do that, but I do that in a bottom-up approach. I look at a lot of stocks first. I have a good idea where I'm going to trade, which stocks are going to trade. Then I confirm it by looking at the sectors, and then I look at the overall market. Now, recently, what have I been trading? For those of you who have been reading the column following services, service, I've been trading second-tier Chinese stocks, Latin American stocks, steel and iron stocks, uh, South American steel and iron stocks, okay? So... Those stocks and the energy stocks and the South American energy stocks that we've been trading, they all have the potential to move independently of our market. Well, our market has been going, what? Mostly sideways as of late. Like I said a few minutes ago, biotech kind of losing steam, drugs losing steam, okay? I think insurance, insurance and chemicals are about the only two areas I can think of off the top of my head that have kind of broken out lately. Um, but for the most part, a lot of those areas have lost steam. Now, we're going to hold on to existing positions, but we're going to be more selective on new ones. And we're going to be more selective in general with the overall market. Okay. And the setup going into tomorrow, I'll give you a little hint. It's an, uh, it's a, uh, what do you call it? A rare earth stock. Okay. So these commodity, rare earth, and foreign stocks have the ability to trade contrary to the overall market. Now, I didn't rush out and say, oh, market's going sideways. Let me go find something that could go contra to the overall market, it's like the setups, how do I say this, found themselves, okay? they The market, the database told me what stocks to be in by looking at the database. So I knew that these stocks were bottoming. They look good. They just so happen to be in areas that could trade contra to the overall market. So if I'm faced with a decision between that and a biotech that's been in a trend for like two years that's pulled back, then maybe I might should go, and I did go with that emerging trend, because it has a lot more potential. So that's a long-winded answer uh, to that question, but good question, okay? So is that 40% the annual rate? Yes, the annual rate, if you pay uh, annually, it, uh, it it averages out to about 124 um, a month. Okay, what do you think watching market profile, order flow, et cetera? Uh, I'm not gonna watch a market that close, at least I'm not gonna watch order flow, okay? Because I'm in for the long pull. And I'm not that worried about every little zig and zag. Now, as I've said a thousand times in webinars, sometimes I'll come in and I'll look at my screens and they're all red and I'm all heavily long. I'll drop an F-bomb or two. And then I'll go for a walk around the block. A block where I live is two miles, okay? So I come in all sweaty. And then I'll look at my screens and go, Wait a minute, everything reversed. Doesn't happen every time, but it happens often enough for me to realize that I'm wasting a lot of mental energy and stressing myself out by watching every little tick. Now, I'm here all day and I have six screens, 
and I do have a lot of projects, and I do keep myself extremely busy so I don't do stupid things like day trade. But truth be told, I am keeping a loose eye on the market. I am letting myself get a little emotional about the ups and downs. But I found myself, as the years go by, worrying less and less and less about the tiny minutia of the markets and just riding out these longer-term trends. And if I get stopped out, I get stopped out. So um, I'm not a, I'm not, I've never used market profile, but if I guess if you would, were to use it, I, I've experimented a little bit with volume by price, where the, bo the volume bars are put on the side of the chart, it looked like this. And one thing that I did find is that they do confirm, like a market will do this and have a consolidation, okay? It does confirm that consolidation with the volume. Now, I'm not a fan of volume. I do not use any volume at all in my trading, but I think if I did, I would use uh, what they call volume by price. And they, they mount the, um, they mount the, but they put the, the price wars on the side of the um, charts. You can get that from uh, stockcharts.com. I, I tried to, uh, well, that's another story. But anyway, this, this is, uh, if you need it, uh, you can get it off of, uh, I'm not, a representative of the company or anything. Uh, but I think if anything, that has some merit, but it it only tells me what I already know. And that's as, that's the closest you're going to get to market profile um, with a, without getting a, a more advanced system with market profile. So I'm not a big fan of that. Okay, Ron. Thank you, Ron. Uh, Ron, just uh, appreciate it. Ron came in on the service. Thank you, Ron. Appreciate it. Steven, thank you. Okay. Uh, any more questions uh, while you have me here? Uh, it's light is starting to pop, so <laughs> I might not be here too much longer. Dave, can you email me the special introductory discount deal, please? Absolutely. Okay. And uh, this uh, this video will be or is being recorded, I should say, and I will put it up to YouTube quickly. As quick as possible, there's a, a process that evolves, so it might take a day or so. But if you want it, as soon as it's processed, uh, just um, as soon as this webinar is over with, I'm going to change the link from get the video uh, from, I'm sorry, get sign up for the webinar to, to get the video. Okay? Any more questions? We'll um, go on once. Go on twice. Okay, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. As you can tell, I love doing these webinars and doing these things. Uh, take a look at the uh, website if you get a chance. Take a look at products and uh, take advantage of that uh, $7 offer. And it'll give you a chance to uh, get in there and get a peek at things and, and check it out. So, uh, again, I appreciate everybody coming. Everybody enjoy the rest of your night. And anything unanswered, shoot me an email at daviddavelander.com. And hope to see all you guys and girls at the Week of Charts on Thursday. Thank you so much.